Hi friends! Today is going to be the TBR takedown for the month of May. <laughs> are new here the TBR takedown is a game that I've been playing for the past couple of years trying to get my TBR down from a really high number it was 240 I think in the beginning down to something manageable it's still not great but it's not 240. I have a lot of unread books and that's what we're trying to do here. This month is going to be a little different because I didn't read a lot this month and I also did a vlog for the majority of what I read this month so I'm actually going to go ahead and do my wrap up in this month's video which is not something I typically do um, just to keep it from being like 50 minutes long but because there's only a couple of books that I really want to talk about we're just going to go ahead and do that here. Okay. I'm also going to do it a little bit differently this month if you are unaware, this idea was originally born via uh, Drinking by My Shelf, Emma at Drinking by My Shelf. She does uh, balancing the books, which I love. And she basically is like, I have, you know, I read this many books and I hauled this many books and is it even balancing the books? We're trying to do more than balance. So I took her idea, I spun it doing what we're doing. We've talked about this before. One of the things that she does that I really enjoy that I don't do is she kind of just goes through the month chronologically so the numbers go up and down the whole time whereas I typically will do all of my haul and then all of my red books and then all of my DNFs whatever. I'm gonna try to do this month a little more chronological because I am doing those uh, reviews as well. Just, just doing it a little differently so you know Roll with me on this one, okay? We started out May with a total of 139 books on my physical unread TBR. Let's start out this video with my rereads. Um, I did a vlog of my 24 hour rereadathon. I will link that in the description box down below as well as the cards if you want to know my full thoughts on these books but we're just going to vaguely go over and this will not change our numbers because again these are rereads. I read the Hex Hall series by Rachel Hawkins which are Hex Hall, Demon Glass, and Spellbound. Hex Hall is a series that follows Sophie Mercer. She is a witch and she is because she's been doing some not nece necessarily great things she is sent to this boarding school where they send all of the bad witches, shapeshifters, werewolves, vampires, etc to kind of like hone in their their bad behavior and when she gets there there's like a murderer and a whole thing and it's just this really great series about uh, societal issues and how you know villains are never villains in their own mind and and and, and it's great. I love it. And I also reread the Hunter trilogy by Mercedes Lackey and they are Hunter, Elite, and Apex. The Hunter series follows Joyo Charmand who lives in this post-apocalyptic world where they have these monsters, basically mythical monsters from all different types of religions that have, there was like a cataclysmic event that then opened up our world to all of those worlds and then the monsters came through. And then there are these hounds which are like dogish type animals that will connect themselves to a hunter and those hunters go out and fight the monsters with the help of their hounds. Joyo is a hunter. She lives in this really remote village where they they kind of hide how many hunters they have because without them they would all die. Uh, but she is pressed to go to this big city called Apex and work for these group of hunters who are basically on like a reality TV show um, of other hunters and it's got a lot of societal issues as you know I love and uh, it's just a really interesting ride and look at society as a whole and also has some good points on like our looks at society and maybe what we're doing wrong and what may lead to a cataclysmic event much like this one. And again all six of those were discussed in that vlog so if you want to know more of my full thoughts on those and you can watch that. I then returned to House of Night which I was reading um, prior to starting the rereadathon and about another day in and I just I just decided to DNF it like it's not it wasn't working for me I was I was at least a third of the way into the book and I had no idea what was happening like it just was it just wasn't working for me. I have heard a lot of good things about this book as far as like its representation of trauma and how to deal with it and the societal issues that it shows but I was just so lost with all the rest of the plot that even those parts though I was enjoying them it just wasn't working for me. Um, I do enjoy Lee's writing. We're going to talk some more about it later on in this video 
um, but just this particular book just did not work for me. So I DNF'd this. I then hauled three books in one day, um, but shocker, none of them count because they're all books that I have read earlier this year. They were all ARCs that I got via Wednesday books that I really enjoyed that I wanted to own physical copies of. They are Amelia Unabridged, which follows Amelia, who is a teenager. She has parents that like really kind of don't care about what she does or what she's doing. She kind of implants herself into her best friend's life. Her best friend's parents kind of take her in. They become very, very close, more like sisters than friends. They have this book series that they've read together. It's what brought them together. Um, they both love it. The, the author is just a couple of years older than them. And so it's somebody that they have been able to connect to. Um, they go to the show where they're supposed to meet him and it ends up being that he, for whatever reason, cancels the show. And Amelia finds out that him inadvertently meeting her friend is kind of what made him cancel the show. And she's mad at her, not only because she convinced him to cancel, but also uh, because she got to meet him and Amelia didn't. And they kind of have this little bit of a falling out. And they're like, it's fine, we'll, you know, discuss our friendship when you get back from your summer trip to whatever, I think she went to Ireland or somewhere. And her friend actually dies while she is away. And so this book follows Amelia a coming to terms with her friend's death especially because they were fighting at the time. After her friend's death she ends up getting this copy of the book in the mail like the third release in the series that they both have loved and it's the 101st book out of a hundred limited edition and she can't figure out like who sent it to her, how she got it, why. It came from a particular bookstore so she decides to go to that bookstore and while she's there she meets the author of the book and it really follows them discussing a grief and dealing with those issues and the power of writing and what it can mean to people whether you are the writer or the reader. Um, this was a beautiful book. I bawled my eyes out. Um, I really loved it so I wanted a copy. You Have a Match by Emma Lord. This is the second book by Emma Lord that I have read. This follows Abby who signs up to take a DNA test with a friend of hers who was adopted just like on a whim so that he doesn't feel alone and it turns out that she finds out that she actually has an older full-blooded sister that her parents gave up for adoption and never told her about. And rather than confront her parents about that, she decides to meet her sister at this summer camp. And it involves like them not only drama in their lives, but also the drama in their parents' lives that led to the story of why they gave up her older sister and how it all kind of fell apart. I did really enjoy this one as well, hence why I bought a copy. And then Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. Again, a Wednesday book arc that I got that I enjoyed that I wanted to pick up. This book follows Darcy who, Darcy has this Dear Abby-esque type scheme that she runs out of a locker in her school where people will put in an envelope with their relationship problems and some money and Darcy will then email them with a response to what she feels like they can do to resolve their issues. And one day when Darcy is retrieving letters from the locker she is caught by Broham who is a student at her school and he rather than being like I'm gonna tell everybody who you are he's like I want you to help me get back my ex-girlfriend. I will pay you to help me get back my ex-girlfriend. And so Darcy takes on this task. Darcy is in love with her best friend um, who I believe her best friend is lesbian and Darcy is bi and it kind of just result revolves around the three of them. It's kind of a love triangle but not really. It has some really good um, points on um, sexual identities and the way that other people's perceive other people perceive specific identities especially the bisexual identity um, that I really enjoyed. So again purchase that. I then decided to unhaul A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluess. This is a whole thing. I will link the book community video down below um, that will explain the majority of this. There were some other authors involved. Only one of the other authors that was involved in this drama is one that I own books from. Um, but I have actually read them and enjoyed them even though I'm not sure that I enjoy her as a human. Um, but because I enjoyed those books, I did decide to keep them. I just will not be promoting them on my channel. This I have not read and therefore do not want to read and support. And so I'm unhauling it. I then read Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. This is the third and final book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I 
think I read the first two books either at the end of last year or at the beginning of this year. I'm not sure which. Um, and I have an aversion to finishing series. I know I have problems, but I decided I wanted to finish it. So I read the third book and I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this one a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to tell you what the series is about because I'm sure you know by now if you're on booktube. I don't want to say too much again because it is the third book in a series but I just felt like a lot of people who have disliked this book say that they disliked it because it didn't have enough of the darkling in it and their reasoning for that is a romantic reason. I feel like this book didn't have enough darkling in it and that is for a plot reason. Like I just I didn't feel the the hopelessness, the inevitability, the the what is the word I'm looking for? The stakes weren't high enough. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't feel like the stakes were high enough. I don't I mean I know that there was some shit going down, don't get me wrong, but it just it kind of meandered and that was kind of a thing throughout this whole series. A lot of it the plot just kind of meanders around until it hits something and it wasn't as direct as it could have been. The characters in this one were kind of just okay. Um, I didn't like, I didn't necessarily love anything. I didn't necessarily hate anything. I do think it was a decent ending to this trilogy. Uh, I like the way things ended, where things ended up. I was very satisfied with the ending. I just, I'm not sure how I feel about the execution of the final book, but still really enjoyed it. I then decided to unhaul two more books and they are Echoes of Memory and Shades of Darkness by A.R. Kaler who also writes under the pit names of Alex R. Kaler and also I think K. Alexander I think is his children's name perhaps. Yeah so I have had these on my shelves for a while probably four-ish years since I started I mean like right around when I started booktube in 2017. I picked these up um, because I have read some of Kaler's other works and have enjoyed them and I just have never really sat down and read them and while I am typically against getting rid of books that I have never read with the exception of authors that have potential problems I don't feel like there's anything wrong with Kaler just this series particularly was supposed to be a trilogy and they're no longer going to release the third book and I have read that the second book is not a good ending point. It does kind of end on like a big cliffhanger. Um, it doesn't really wrap anything up because again he was planning on having a third book. They just decided not to publish it. So I don't want to read these two and not have a complete ending to the story and that's really the only reason why I'm unhauling these. Uh, otherwise I would very much like to read them. I'm sure it's a story I would enjoy because uh, it sounds dark and creepy and cool but I would just hate myself forever if I picked them up and read them without ever having an ending. If for some reason at some point in the future they change their minds and they decide to publish the third book 20 years from now I'll rebuy the first two books but uh, as of right now I'm hauling these. And then the last book that we're going to talk about is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo which I read this month. Uh, again, not going to tell you what this is about because if you're on book two, you already know. I will say this is the first book in the duology that comes after the Shadow and Bone trilogy. This involves a completely different set of characters. I gave this a four out of five stars. I do think this was better on plot. I think because it is such a like um, a heist novel, it is more clear cut on the plot. It doesn't meander quite like the other did. I think there were some really good um, twists, turns, plot developments. I love the characters from this book so much. Like all of the characters, they are great, amazing. Love them. I love the way that they're described and how you get the sense of... It's hard to do when you have six lead characters that you're in the mind of, but the fact that without even being told whose mind I was in, I would know um, just by like their mannerisms, their the things they were talking about, what they were doing. Um, the audiobook is also a full cast audiobook, so like that helps. Um, but I definitely really enjoyed this book, where it went, loved it. The end was crazy. I'm excited for the next book, but I don't have it planned for next month. So it's gonna have to wait until July. But uh, as we're all aware, I hate to end things. So that's probably what would have happened anyway. So if you weren't keeping track, and as I say, why would you? Because I do that for you. Um, we started out at 139. I did not haul any books that counted because I have already read them all. I read two books that count this month. I DNF'd one. I unhauled three. That leaves us at 133 books for the month of May. 
Technically it leaves us at 133 for the beginning of the month of June, but that's neither here nor there. I feel like I'm doing really good on my my TBR takedown this year. Um, I feel like I'm doing a great job. I'm very excited to read all of these books, to get through them all after all these years. Um, last weekend, I've kind of said recently, especially with what I would call a minor success of the 24 hour rereadathon vlog, which basically was just I was actually able to finish a vlog from beginning to end, which doesn't normally happen if you're not aware. Um, I'm really bad at vlogging. So I think with the success ish of that, I have some more vlogs that I want to do. I've picked out a couple of groups of books that I have put on the other side of my room. And um, I'm going to do some vlogs coming up to hopefully get through some of my physical books and go through that. But that's all going to come after June. Um, if you watch my June TBR, you will know why. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments below your comments, questions, or concerns. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! Ooh, ooh, ooh.